event where people come together to create video games in an extremely little amount of time. A game jam where either you make a video game in two days or three days, depending if you do the jam or the combo, but it is you sit your butt down and you make video games in a short amount of time. It's not really a competition because there are winners, but there's no prizes and kind of everyone wins. It's awesome to see so many people making games in such a short duration of time. Well, for me at least, it's an excuse to actually you know, get out and start making games. To me, what I'm there is uh, it is an opportunity to do different stuff from our day-to-day -day grind. It's just a great way of kind of yeah, getting better at your craft and, and trying stuff out. It's kind of just grown to be this awesome three times a year thing where we get together and we challenge ourselves to make a game. Yes, Nowadays, Dunmer has grown. The last edition was, I think, 37 or 38. It's going to have 15th anniversary soon. And nowadays there are thousands of games submitted. One of the first games I made was Cat Liquor, uh, which was a game we made for Ludum Dare, yeah. uh, Joe and I. It's actually a weird game. You run around this uh, green space, and there's all these cats running around. You have to run into them, and when you get them, you start like licking the cat. So like, the cats look cats, get points, and it goes on. We got ridden up a couple times. Um, we, we ranked for humor for that game. I made a game where you're a face and you shoot your tongue to collect candies. It's like a rhythm game. Oh, that's nice. Or I made one where like it's actually my head and you have to feed me food before I vomit. I don't know. <laughs> so I it's just it's, I played that one. Yeah, 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 yeah I love that one. There's a lot of like just creative opportunities there, and I think it's really cool. Uh, my first Ludum Dare was Ludum Dare 27. Uh, the theme was 10 seconds, so uh, we actually worked together on this one, and it was a game called Kickbox, which is kind of an arena-style soccer game where you both play as boxes, and your goal is just to pretty much play soccer with kind of wacky rules like bombs or uh, a ball that turns into a rock. It's sort of like Rocket League. Yeah. <laughs> it was a 2D platformer where the theme was you could, there could only be one. And so you played like this deer thing that had like really wide Lugia hands and it was, it was a 2D pixel platformer and you would run across the level and the theme of there can only be one was you would run into a statue thing and you would get one power, either fireballs or gravity manipulation. It was just like one, one thing you could do. And so you'd only have one orb at a time that you could just jump back and forth or defeat enemies with. And so, and it was only one level really short. You could beat it maybe in about two and a half minutes. And it was crude, but we shipped it. And that's when I kept wanting to do more of them. <laughs> It was called Tile Risers, and so it was basically a multiplayer version of threes, and you could eat each other's numbers and steal numbers and things like that. It was a lot of fun. I did a, a prototype um, uh, for the theme Unusual Weapons, where the core mechanic is that uh, it's a self-inflicted bullet hell. Each shot you fire stays in the level, so the more you shoot, the harder it gets. And um, it actually, uh, I ended up getting a publishing deal for that game uh, last year, and. Uh, it's now been uh, been published for to Steam and PlayStation 4 and uh, Vita. I joined Ludum Dare. I made a game called MacPixel. It took me 20. It took me 48 hours to do that. And then the response to that was quite quite alright. It was like quite overwhelming. Top of the morning, you ladies. My name is Jack Septiger, and welcome to a game called MacPixel. <laughs> How's it going, bro? I don't know why I keep dancing. It's so corny. Welcome back to the. Why did you do that? Mac Pick Show! I was like, hey, this is a game I should polish, I should add more to it, I should expand it, add more content, and maybe release it. This should be my next game. So I finished the game I was working on, uh, I managed to I managed to monetize it, I managed to get money to finish finish Mac Pixel, which is now a game that pretty much most of the people at this event have played. It's like, hey, it's incredible, it's incredible. I'm like walking up to people, I'm like, hey, did you play Mac Pixel? They're like, yeah, I played Mac Pixel. Like, wow. It's like, it's it's so much fun and it's it has changed my life. The fact that I am here is thanks to Ludum Dare. The 
I wasn't really sure where to start. I didn't really have any idea of like, how does one break into the game industry? And uh, when I was looking into it, I came across this contest, Let Em Dare. I thought, oh, this is great because I don't have to know what I'm doing and I could just go for it for a weekend and learn something and then and build on it from there. I would say I, I, I do work in the game industry now and I think Ludum Dare was extremely important in getting me here. I started Ludum Dare when I was in high school and it had been I'd been dabbling in games for about a year. Uh, but I hadn't done I'd been doing things privately, I hadn't ever released anything to people. And it, it, can, it affirmed for me that games were what I wanted to do. In terms of learning to program and learning to make games, there's no better thing you can do than do a game jam. You have a short period of time, you have to figure out what you're going to make, you have to figure out how much you can get done in a limited amount of time, so there's a planning element. It's probably the best game development experience that you can get without actually doing it as a job. It's, it's really taught me the importance of scoping your work properly. Because um, when, you, when you have a time frame, it definitely forces you to make the important decisions early on as far as what things you can and can't do. Where else do you get that? Like who says, like when they want to make a video game, I want to make the smallest game possible. You know, people don't want that. They want the biggest game, they want the best game, they want the greatest graphics, they want the coolest gameplay. But when you start in this constraint system, you have to start thinking the smallest game possible, mm. you know, and uh, and that's it's a it's a direction that most people don't want to go, no. and it forces you to go there, and it just teaches you to like grow. Like it really changes your perspective, like as a creator, uh, being forced into the strict deadlines of a jam. So, yeah, yeah constraints are creativity. There you go. Yeah. <laughs>